one. We have a uh, discussion about the magnetic force now. Now, how does this work? Well, magnetic force works as, um, as we said, a 90 degree angle with both velocity and the magnetic field. In fact, to find them, you have to multiply the velocity vector across parallel with the magnetic field. I'm going to just run it as a vector for right now. And multiply by the charge of our um, particle that is moving in this magnetic field. Uh, we also know, let me write this as B, and we also know that there is a force from the electric field which is equal to the um, charge of the particle times the electric field. So if we put, if we put these two together, we're going to have Fp plus Fe, so force from the field and force from the electric field is equal to Q times E plus V cross B. Okay. And I think that the best way of saying this is through example 5.2, the cycle of motion. In fact, if we draw an x and y, x, y, z um, axis, we're going to see something very uh, particular. All right, so uh, we're going to draw z over here, y over here, and x over here. I'm following the uh, book. Notation. The electric field is pointing up, and of course, the magnetic field then is going to point towards the left. Okay, and we have a particle that starts with v is equal to zero at time zero, so v not is equal to zero times zero. So what happens? Well, it starts going up, right? Because of course we know that it's accelerated by the electric field, so it starts going up. So it gains a certain speed, but now, the, uh, why does the, the uh, magnetic field act? Well, because V at that moment is zero. So for example, if we say FB at times equal to zero, we're gonna have Q times zero, because velocity is zero, cross B, which is of course equal to zero. Well, FE at time zero does not depend on on our velocity, so it's just going to be equal to Q times E. So we start having an acceleration along the Z uh, component, along the Z direction. Um, so after, uh, when we start having an acceleration, that means we start having a velocity. So that means as soon as the electric field acts on the particles, even the magnetic field acts on the particle. So for example, let's say after one second, uh, F E is still equal to Q times E. And instead, the velocity of the particle is going to be equal to the, um, oh, sorry, the acceleration is going to be equal to the force divided by the mass of the particle. And of course, the velocity is going to be equal to the uh, acceleration times the time. Uh, so it's equal to uh, F over M times T. And now that we have this acceleration that with this velocity means that our fb at time is equals to one is going to be equals to what well q times v that now exists and it's actually equals to this i just want to v for uh, just because it's quicker cross v but how does the uh, magnetic force act on it well if we say that the velocity is this vector uh, this blue vector that I just drew, this blue vector right here, then our magnetic field is gonna push it on a 90 degree angle. And as you can see, because it's a cross product, it means that the direction is gonna be along the y-axis. So it means that the trajectory of our um, particle will be something like this. Now, it, as the velocity increases, our force given by the magnetic field increases because, of course, the velocity increases, therefore, that increases. While the force given by the electric field does not increase with the uh, velocity, therefore, it's going to be the same thing uh, as it was at the beginning. But the force of the magnetic field increases, therefore, it bends the particles so much that the uh, electric force becomes 
relevant. It even and once we get to this point right here, the velocity is actually going this way. So now if you think about it, the direction of the force or the magnetic force will be equals will be in downward direction. So against the electric field. That means that our uh, particle will start going down like this. And once we get to this point right here, our particle as a velocity equals to zero again. Because the electric force and the magnetic force are the same at this point. And of course now we're gonna start again with the uh, cycle term motion, that's what it's called, of the particle, and it's gonna go over and over and over. And this is actually used in many experiments because this lets you calculate the charge of the particle and even the initial velocity, if it has an initial velocity. And uh, this is a great uh, way of seeing it. Of course, there's all the calculations that I'm gonna show you in a second. So if we say that the position is equals to uh, component x, y, and z, uh, then we know that the velocity is going to be equal to x dot comma dot y dot comma z dot. However, uh, the uh, particle will never move along the z x axis because there's nothing pushing on it. So the velocity is always going to be zero on it. So it's going to be zero comma y dot comma z dot. Well, on the y dot and z the y direction and z direction, as you can see, it moves up in z direction thanks to the electric force and moves in along the y direction thanks to the magnetic force. So this is what is going to happen. Therefore, when we move, when we cross this with our B, the magnetic field, which actually acts along the z direction, as you can see right here, then we're going to have uh, I, J, K, and then V we said is equal to zero, and then y dot z dot and b is equals to b in the z direction z direction and then zero and zero so here's going to be of course i actually i'm going to skip the calculation i'm sure you know it already it's going to be equals to z, b z dot y uh sorry j direction i'm going to put a j hat so it's easier to realize what direction that is uh minus b y dot k hat and of course, this has to be added to the uh, force. Total force we said is equals to what? Is equals to this formula right here. Because as you can see, we added the two forces together. So it's going to be Q times the electric field. The electric field only acts along the uh, Z uh, axis. So it's going to be equals to um, E in the k hat direction uh, plus we said what is v times v v times v is this part here so we're just going to copy and paste it here to save some time so and uh, we said this is equals to a force of course and force is equals to m a which is in three direction now so it would be equals to m times sorry n times x double dot comma y double dot comma z double dot so if we break this in pieces actually sorry x double dot we said is equals to zero because already velocity sorry x dot is equals to zero therefore x double dot is equals to zero so we can rewrite this as um y double dot z double dot there we go okay so now the uh, next step is going to be breaking into these components so you know for example actually I'm going to write down the way we're writing it before with the JK. So I'm going to have J. Actually, now you know what? Let's look at that. Um, okay, of course, it's going to be in J direction because it's a Y. It's going to be in the K direction because it's a Z. Okay, so if we break it down, we take everything that contains the K. We're going to have M times Z double dot in the K direction is equals to K E K direction minus b y dot k direction uh, i can get rid of all the k's because of course they're in the same direction so we're going to have m z 
capital dot is equal to k e and minus p y dot. And instead, for the force in the j direction, we only have b sorry q b z dot j direction, and so m uh, y j direction. So let's get rid of this because it's the same direction. So we we'll need to write q b z hat is equal to m y double uh, the y double dot. Okay, so if we uh, assume that w so the um, um, uh, angular velocity pretty much what does imagine is is equal to q b over m, then our calculations uh, become easier because of course you can see here it's going to be equal to y double dot is equal to q p c hat over m so it's is equal to w uh, z hat while on the other side we're going to have z double dot is equal to q e minus p y dot over m um, but I forgot a q right here yeah. so okay so here we're going to have z double dot is equal to q e over m q e over m minus w y dot and this can be solved because of course it's a double differential equation we're going to have the y uh, is equal to in terms of time of course because we're integrating in terms of time it's equal to c1 cosine of wt plus c2 sine of wt plus e over b uh, t plus a constant 3. And instead, z, in terms of time, of course, because we always integrate in terms of time, is going to be equal to c2 cosine of w2 minus c1 sine of w2 plus c4. And there is our answer. Now, of course, we can find these constants based on the initial conditions. For example, we we'll start saying that t cost is going to be equal to zero when we are at the beginning, so and all the stuff like that. Uh, I'm not going to do all the work, but it's pretty easy to see. Uh, I hope that helped, and uh, please write down the comments if you need any questions.